The fact that after 9-11, the United States, um, in its political and journalistic and intellectual elites, generally speaking, refused to accept that there was a direct and tragic and awful historic consequence of its destabilization of Afghanistan in the 1980s to the degree that um, Taliban facilitation of Osama bin Laden in the country helped uh, uh, the execution of the 9-11 plot, which it's important to note, did not involve Afghans and was not staged from Afghanistan, nor was it even planned in Afghanistan. It was far more uh, planned in Germany. Um, nevertheless, that was an early foreboding of what we would see over the next 20 years, not just in Afghanistan, but throughout the war on terror, a disconnection, an unwillingness to face that America's violent and imperial actions breed their own next generation of enemies. That was on display once the United States went back into Afghanistan. And throughout the Afghanistan war, even during periods where um, counterinsurgency campaigns, at least on paper, uh, paid lip service to the idea that protecting Afghan lives and, uh, you know, property and so forth uh, was going to ultimately be decisive in the war. It never acted that way. It never acted as if um, what the, uh, the point of the war was, was the protection of Afghan lives. It uh, more often acted in such a way that it did not draw distinctions uh, between Afghan lives um, and Afghan enemies. And amongst the, the major reasons for this is not necessarily like a specific decision uh, to target Afghan civilians, but an inability to understand the country, understand its dynamics, and understand the rather complicated relationships in many ways between people who fight for the Taliban and the Taliban itself, or people who aid the Taliban under threat to their own life or threat to their family, or simply seek to endure the war, as so many people throughout so many wars simply aspire to, simply by not taking action that uh, harmed the Taliban because they understood the consequences that, could, um, that, that they could experience. Over time, all of these things uh, strengthened the Taliban, made the Taliban seem like, once again, a viable alternative to the United States. And then on a different level, the United States' contribution, um, and not just the United States alone's contribution um, to uh, the misery in Afghanistan, came through the corruption that it always blamed on the Afghans, but was a significant driver of itself. So-called development experts, development aid and development money poured into Afghanistan far beyond a consideration of what a devastated Afghan economy could in fact absorb. And some of this money was very deliberately flooded in from the CIA to pay off warlords to ensure that they would ultimately uh, be responsive to American interests, which would often be violent interests, which would often be things like as uh, the Joint Special Operations Command would perform throughout the Afghanistan war. Um, uh, Army special forces in particular throughout the Afghanistan war, raids on people's houses suspected of being, aiding, or facilitating the Taliban. Um, and again, the Taliban, not even al-Qaeda, not the thing that attacked the United States, certainly not the core of al-Qaeda that plotted, planned, and executed 9-11. The United States was now at an extended war with a one-time uh, harborer ally of al-Qaeda, rather than the thing itself, responsible for all of Afghanistan, but never acting responsibly toward the Afghan people.